Okay, so welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, the hardest career series. Today's episode, we're going to be checking in on Rouge 1 and Rouge 2, primarily. Well, we're going to take a look at Explorers 1, 2, 3 and 4 as well. We're going to head to the tracking station, so we can get any signs off the uh, spacecraft as well. Okay, in the tracking station, as you can see, we've got uh, question marks. Now, these are unknown objects. Highly likely they're not going to be UFOs. More likely going to be asteroids. And as you can see, because we've got these, we have upgraded the tracking station. I believe I've already mentioned that I've uh, upgraded the tracking station already. So we have... That's not the right one, is it? No. Let's get rid of the others. We have landers. Rovers, landers. We've got no spacecraft. We have got relays. We've got the relays. And these pesky lines as well. Okay, so we've got Kurt Button. It's one, two, three. Minrov. Double on probe. Explores one. That's 134 days, 1 hour, 3 minutes. Go up to 4 minutes. So this is the one we blasted out of the curbing system. Yeah, there's no actual ETS how long it's going to take him to get there. Unfortunately. Okay, well, there's no one going to get in touch with that. We'll get any signs of anything off that, so I don't think so. I upgraded the tracking service, like I mentioned, so we might get something from this. No. Ah, well, never mind. So, Explorers 2, which is when we uh, reduced its orbital periapsis as close to the sun as we could get it. So, as I mentioned, hopefully that's going to come around at some point and come within range of Kerm, which we can get the yeah, 30 points of seism ionization scan hardware we fitted to it. Without it costing as much electric charge, it seems to want to charge us right now. So, we've got Tiros 1. I already mentioned Tiros 7 is going to be the next episode. I believe I mentioned that in the last episode. So, we already got Tiros 1. Now, Tiros 1 was a series of weather satellites here on Earth. Which basically just cameras fitted to them and spin stabilized. So we've got Explorers 4. We'll go to Explore 3 first. So they are still in range. Ooh, well, inside range. Okay. Nice. So Rouge 1 and Rouge 2 have obviously taken off a much faster rate compared to Explorers 3 and 4. Yet the 3 and 4 was it's a good few days before Rouge 1 and Rouge 2 was deployed. But we uh, sent 3 and 4 on the way for Explorer series. Okay. What is their signal strength? Oh, it's still 1. Still 100%. Hmm, okay. So I think we'll try and get some science off Explorers 3 and 4. Yeah, so it means it keeps zooming out like that for some reason. Yep, so 100% for both of them. So I'll head for 3 first. And then we'll check on Rouge 1 and Rouge 2. Okay, so Explorers 3. Electric charge it seems to be. Yep, that's fine. We've got 700 electric charge. It's got a magnetometer boom already deployed. Which is just here. And we do appear to be uh, still in range. And they're using at practically zero force decoupling. So obviously, that is the spent stage that brought us here. So. But it's still in the vicinity. I've not used any of the uh, stars on board the spacecraft itself. Let's see if we can get some signs back. So we are 
still 100%. We're not that far away. Ooh, 30 again. So, obviously, scan extra while in space high over the sun. Yes, moving further away from the sun produces less light and heat. Now, we should have plenty of electric charge to send this back. Yeah, that's fine. Seventy, eighty. Oh, still nearly half. Yeah. It's about two hundred and sixty, two hundred and seventy or so. Well, we can't be helped. Of course, we do have uh, contracts assigned to these pieces of equipment, but obviously, we don't have any contracts for that yet. Or surface too high. Let's log it. Cable's enormous magnetosphere extends well beyond the orbit of ELU, affecting all of the planets in the solar system. Okay, 4.8 science. I shouldn't take anything at all. No, that's fine. Now, do we have anything else? I can't remember if I fit anything else. I think. Did I fit any other parts? I don't think I did. Where's the core? Nope. Okay, that's fine. So we've got 30 and then 4.8 signs. Look, let's head over to Explore 4. Let's see if we get any signs from that. It probably won't make much difference. Okay, with uh, Explorer 4. So as I was saying, we uh, it's probably not going to get much in the way of science, if anything at all, off these, because they're so close together. No. Ah, well. We've got no other size packages on here. No. Yeah, okay. That's to be expected until they move further apart. I'm not going to use a propulsion system on either of these two spacecraft because there's just... There's not much point. I'll let them go along with Kerbin or... Basically, it's directly ahead, slightly under Kerbin's orbit. So we actually need to uh, do something with them. I'll leave them out here for now. Okay, so with Rouge 1, first of all. We'll go to the map view in a second or two. And we'll check on its trajectory. So you have to make any uh, adjustments or anything like that. Did I not fit any signs to this? No, I did not. Oh, damn. Oh, there we We've got full tanks. We'll be using non propulsion systems fuel. So I better not have done. Was have leaked. No. Okay. Obviously, this is pointing back towards curbing, which is that little blue dot just there. Just so we can keep in touch with these two high gain antennas. Okay. So head to the map view, and we'll make sure the trajectory is actually on. If we need to make any adjustments, we'll do those right now, because we have got 62% signal strength. So we're not, we aren't exactly desperate, but we shall make any adjustments if we need to right now. Okay, so it would appear that we have 170.505 kilometers. We've got 378 days, 2 hours and 53 minutes before encountering Duna. So I can't see any reason to do anything. None whatsoever. 170,505 kilometres, well inside 500 kilometres that we need as a minimum, sorry, maximum, I should say, for the uh, the contract. But it's not actually telling me now. do not tell me that. I don't know why it does this. 
it refuses to acknowledge the spacecraft when you load back in first of all but it is fine it will complete okay so what distance are we actually at according to this 1.59 gigameters and we're still well over halfway so we're talking in excess of three gigameters aren't we at least three gigameters or more with with an upgraded tracking station and two high gain antennas with four high gain antennas no wonder these are a hundred percent this can actually go further than these than the roof space after two explorers three and four could be twice the range and still be in touch with us so that's quite a distance okay well, i can't see anything to do i've got nothing else to do so i'll go and check on rouge 2. okay so with rouge 2 now rouge 2 will encounter hopefully will encounter juna earlier than rouge 1. so i'm targeting juna right now and it's 6.54 gigameters or 6544.3 million meters so that's quite a distance no science again to be collected off this I didn't want anything to sort of weigh these spacecraft down too much and there's no science to be had off the actual probe core either okay we just target Kerbin let's point directly back at Kerbin that's no, not too far off Okay, and we are 60% signal strength. It's 53 days. Yeah, 53 and a half days or so. Okay, check the electric charge usage. I didn't do one there. On the range one, 700 electric charge. That's about 1.34 electric charge per second charge rate. technically yeah no, it's, yeah that's fine nothing wrong with that at all okay let's say to the map view okay so it appears that rouge 2's periapsis has not shifted at all it's not moved at all it's not drifted 96 days three hours so 96 and a half curbing days and it's 163.308 kilometers 160,308 meters so again that is well inside 500 kilometer maximum altitude okay I think that's it so there's no signs to be sent back on either Rouge 1 or Rouge 2 I've already covered that Explorers 3 and 4 will continue we'll continue to come back and check on these every so many episodes until at least Rouge 2 has encountered Duna so that's about 90, it's about three, it's over three curbing days. Uh, three curbing months, I should say. Okay, let's head back to the space centre. Okay, so back at the space centre after checking on Rouge 1 and 2. As well as explores one, two, three, and four. So three and four look quite promising. And rouge one and two are absolutely spot on target. No need to actually adjust their trajectory at all. It's just to show I'm not carrying any science. But I didn't want to sort of risk adding mass to the spacecraft. Okay, so that's in this episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to click like, it's appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you do actually enjoy the content, that is also much appreciated. Also, I've got you to share it with, the, uh, with your friends, any of the videos, well, actually on the channel in full stop. It always helps the channel if people spread videos far and wide. All right, so, don't forget we have Discord, Facebook, and Twitter. You find it's all three of those platforms on the banner front page of the channel. I'm more active on Twitter, more than the other two platforms right now. So you want to uh, come onto the uh, Twitter platform, just click the uh, the link on the banner front page of the channel and you can come on and ask me a question if uh, you want to know what I'm doing right now. 
I do post updates on the Twitter feed more than anywhere else right now. Alright, so, obviously if you want to leave a comment, comment or question on the video itself, any of the videos, you are more than welcome to do so. However, there is a moderator team, so please don't forget that. Uh, it does kind of take a while for them to get to me if there's a question that you want to ask. Alright, so, once again, thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the very next episode. In the meantime, as always, take care and bye-bye. Uh,